Welcome to Ephonis Fanaticus, aka the Ephon Freak. I've recently been on an unboxing streak and this video is no exception. I'll be unboxing yet another audio gear, but this time I'm not unboxing any flagship or legendary Ephon from the past, but rather a digital audio player. This is the Onkyo DPX1A, a high-res, Android-based digital audio player, or DAP for short, released last year. This is the successor to the DPX1 which I also have here. As you can see, it's really beat up. There are noticeable cracks on the screen and scratches around the body, as well as a black tape stuck to the top. This one is so beat up that the volume wheel doesn't even work, and the balance output port is so loose that most of the time I can't hear anything from the right side. I had to shove in some needles to push the ports in order to fix them in place. That's why the black tape is there by the way. I needed the replacement and the DPX1A seems to be the best fit despite my less than ideal experience with the previous version, so I bought it anyway. I still have the DPX1 box lying around even though I bought it back in summer 2016. Yeah, I know there are really no reason for anyone to do this. I don't know why I'm hoarding these boxes, but as because I still have it, I figured it might be cool to do a small comparison between the two. As you'll notice very quickly, they are basically the same. I'm pretty sure they used the same product shots on the front, but they did move the high-res logo all the way to the top right corner because it is such a big f***ing deal, and instead they put X1A at where the logo was supposed to be. What about the top? High Fidelity Audio Player. Well, they are completely identical. Left side. Pure sound since 1946. That of course is the founding year of Onkyo, but yeah, it's the same on both boxes. What about the back? They're um, slightly different actually. It says the DPX1A uses twin DAX and supports Google Play, with this being an Android device and all. This is great because this means you can use streaming services like Spotify and Tidal, as well as apps like Mora to buy songs. Below the product description, we can see some specs regarding the player. The only differences here are that the new version has doubled the internal storage at 64 gigs. Not super important because most people buying this kind of devices uses micro SD cards anyway, because lots of files are so damn big, especially the high res ones. Also, they downgraded the Android version from Android 5.1 to Android 5.1.1. Thank you so much, Onkyo. I didn't want to use a new operating system anyway, and it's not like we had Android 8.1 last year anyway. Actually, I think they made a mistake here. I checked both players after the unboxing and they're both running 5.1.1. I don't know why they changed it in the specs, but whatever. Now something I'm ecstatic to see is that there is indeed a huge improvement to battery life. The new version uses the same battery as before, but now you get an extra 6 hours of high-res playback time. And of course this also means when you're not playing high-res files, you should get an even bigger increase. That's super awesome, because I always found the old version to die relatively quickly, even when idle. Another thing I noticed is that now they also explicitly stated the new player supports MQA, even though the old one already supports it. I had a look at the bottom of the box, surprisingly they are the same, wow! What about the right side? Uh, yeah, so the externals are practically identical, you can't get any lazier than this. Oh well, it's what's inside that counts, right? The box slides from the right just like that, and... Ooh... <laughs> oh, this box actually smells so good! I think Onkyo should get into the fragrance business. Heck, I'll turn this box into incense or something. There's just nothing on this black box at all, and it looks like the monolith from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I love that movie. Crap, now I don't know if I should turn it into the monolith of incense. I open up the box, it opens like a book actually. The player is on the left in plastic wraps, but I want to check out the right side first. Once again, the right side swings open like a door as well, and inside we can find a quick start guide as well as a bunch of papers that nobody really cares. Instead of mine inside the box of my old player untucked, I mean it's just an Android device, you'll get around without needing any tutorials. But look at this, they cram so many papers in this plastic bag, that really just makes you think, why are these even necessary? Aren't we supposed to save papers these days? And they could honestly just put all this crap on the internet, right? There's also a USB cable in the same compartment, I don't know why I bothered to take it out. I mean it's just a freaking USB cable, what the hell is wrong with me? Alright, let's check out the player. I removed the plastic bag which actually felt awkwardly satisfying and um, yeah, it really feels like the old player on the hand. 
but something I noticed is that the new player seems to be just a little bit lighter than the old one. It just be placebo to be honest. We audiophiles are really prone to that as much as we hate to admit. I have the old player lying around, so of course the next logical thing to do is a side-by-side -side comparison. The front looks the same to me, the left sides look a little different to me at first. I thought the coverage is more dramatic on the new player, but nope, they're actually the same. The bottom reads twin deck by the way, sorry for covering it up with my thumb. The back looks the same. We have the Onkyo logo on the bottom left and a weird black bar at the bottom. However, I do think the texture is different. The new one feels a tad bit rougher than the old one. The old one almost feels like a completely smooth surface. It's super minor, but I like the difference. What about the right side of the player? Once again, we still have the same power button, play, pause, previous track, next track, as well as two micro SD card slots. However, I did notice that the markings on the new one actually do look a bit sharper. And finally, the bottom of the player is identical to the old one. The mini USB port is in the same spot. It says it is made in China on the top right corner. At the bottom, you can see the model of the player. I pressed the power button to try to boot the player. I expected the first boot to take some time, so I waited for a while. And boy, did I wait! It actually took so long that I decided to look at the external to try to find other differences. I tried turning the volume wheel and was very pleased to find that the button is a lot stiffer. And there is more of a distinct click compared to the old one. I hope this is an indication that the volume wheel is more durable than before. The top of both players are different as well. The left side shows the model of each player, and more noticeably they use a black metal plate rather than the silver metal plate on the old one. I do think it makes the player cleaner looking, so I dig it. Oh by the way, you might be able to see those needles I was talking about. I jammed them into the grooves containing the ports in order to tighten them up. I ran out of things to look at on the outside, so I wanted to look at the inside, except I can't because it is still freaking booting, Jesus Christ! I was so bored that I even went back to the leaflets, because what the hell am I supposed to do otherwise? One of the papers is actually a leaflet for Eon Q Music, an online music store that allows you to buy high-res audio tracks. With this, you can not only buy Western music, but you can also buy Japanese music, which is great because they are usually really hard to find anywhere else. I don't care about high res one single bit, but I do care about buying lossless tracks. It just doesn't make sense to buy expensive audio gear just to listen to highly compressed or poorly mastered albums. There's also this piece of paper that's basically the size of a bed sheet, as well as a paper for registering your new purchase. Now mine's Japanese because I bought this in Japan back in July from Yodobashi. With tax rebates and union pay discount, I only had to pay around 390 US dollars rather than the 630 US dollars price in Hong Kong. Even if I went for parallel imports in Hong Kong, I would still have to pay an extra 40 US dollars compared to what I actually paid buying from Yodobashi. The only downside is that if the player does break, fixing it would be a huge pain because it would require me to physically go to Japan for repair. But I trust Onkyo's products, so I'm not too concerned. At last, the DPX1A finally booted. The setup process is just like any other Android devices, so I'll just speed it up. And there we have it. The UI is very similar to the stock Android, which I don't mind. I just need this thing to play music and maybe browse YouTube every once in a while. The app drawer is very generic, and as you can see, you can add some widgets and stuff. Here's the DPX1 for comparison. They basically copy and pasted the layout from the old one, which is a bit lazy, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'll show you what the player app looks like. It's a modified version of the OnQ HF player that you can buy or try on Google Play. Upon boot up, it tells me to choose the headphone type. I don't know what this is supposed to do, but I'm surprised they still don't have the E900M as an option. Oh well. Now if you've used the DPX1 before, this player should be extremely familiar to you. You can access the internal storage of the two microSD cards from here, and you can choose a folder to play a specific track or just play the whole folder. I fired up the options for a quick look. In particular, I was interested in the sound settings. One of the coolest things about these OnQ DAPs is that you can customize the output on a very technical level. You can choose the digital filter to make the sound smoother or sharper, 
you can adjust the lock range to change the tolerance for time delay relative to the crystal oscillator or something like that. You can also increase the gain setting for any earphones or headphones that are hard to drive. It's all the same from the old player. So I think this is a good place to wrap up the video. I think overall we can all agree that the packaging and the player itself are all vastly unchanged, but there are some subtle yet welcome changes that might just make the DPX1A a worthy purchase. I might make a video in the future to further compare this player with the old DPX1, so definitely stay tuned if you're in the market for a new player, or waiting for someone to convince you that the DPX1A is a good upgrade. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment or even subscribe to this channel. As a small channel, every bit of support goes a long way to motivate me to bring more exciting content to you guys. This has been Euphonis Fanaticus, and I'll see you in the next video.